Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to Money Monday. It's Nakia Carter. I'm back again for another Money Monday. Come on in. Um, get your, your items ready. You need a pen and a piece of paper. Tonight we're going to do a two-part um, Money Monday since I, I was traveling last week and didn't get an opportunity to share some, some, some jewels with you and tips with you. So we're talking about um, 2024 prep last quarter of the year hey candy welcome to money monday for part one and then for part two we're talking about um five things the middle class wastes money on i saw an interesting article on yahoo finance that i want to share with you all i think it's a great insight into kind of what's going on and yeah we'll talk about that so we'll give folks another 45 seconds or so to jump on and then we will get rocking and rolling I have my notes here as always. I was prepping before the call. Hopefully, um, Feb uh, Sept I was going to say February. <laughs> September is flying by. I feel like I blinked and now we're in the middle of the month. So I'm just excited to still be able to do Money Mondays with you all. Um, don't forget the Money Reset is open. I'm accepting new students. So get your spot in this exclusive lifetime access opportunity. Um, the link is in my bio, excuse me, excuse me, and I'll also be sharing the link, but yeah, we're going to be ready to go. So if you need help with some 2025 goals or you need a plan for 2025, go ahead and head to the link and register for the money reset. Okay, so let's get started with Money Monday. So as I said earlier, we're going to do two parts. Part one, we're going to talk about um, how to prep for this last quarter of 2024, and then we're going to talk about um, in part two, five things the middle class waste money on okay so let's start with uh with part one so as you all know if you've been following me for five minutes um you know that i love forecasting i love planning out what my life looks like not just financially but but in, in terms of goals and what i'm going to be doing for the next six months what i'm going to be doing for the next 12 months I think that that's instrumental in your life and designing what your life looks like, right? So you're just not doing the same things over and over. You don't wake up five years from now with the same life. So that's really what part one focuses on is forecasting. So what we know, we know quarter four is coming up, October, November, December. We know traditionally that's holiday season. So now we have Halloween. Um, hey, Carla, welcome to Money Monday. We have uh, Halloween in October. It's always been in October, but it just seems like now stores are making a big deal out of it. So that's in October. November, you have Thanksgiving and then Black Friday shopping. December is Christmas. And then we head right into the new year with January, right? And that's technically not a part of quarter four, but we're going to include it in this batch of conversation for the sake of what you should be focusing on. So as you're focusing on what to do in the next quarter right maybe you don't kind of know what to focus on there are two things that you really should be focusing on you should be focusing on finishing 2024 strong and then prepping for 2025 okay so let's start with finishing 2024 strong that might look like doing a tax check right and we've talked about this frequently because i feel like a lot of people um in a certain tax bracket bracket especially if you're making over six figures a year you may have a big tax shock and i don't i want you to be, be prepared for that i don't want you to be surprised by anything that's going on hey shantae welcome to money monday um so really looking at your taxes focusing on maximizing your return and minimizing your tax liability that can look like selling some capital gains at a loss maybe you bought some stock and it tanked and you just want to go ahead and sell it so that you can get those uh savings on your tax bill that can look like reviewing how much you have going to your 401k and increasing that amount so that you are paying less taxes moving forward or it could be gathering donations right so cleaning out that closet maybe you have an old car that doesn't run and you want to donate that consider doing that so that you can save on your tax bill so that come february 2025 you're not shocked by this this extremely high tax bill and you're not prepared so that's something that you can do in 2024 to really start off strong finish strong right the next thing that you can do is a goal check so go back and look at those goals that you wrote down back in january look at that um, vision board figure out what goals you hit were you successful where did you maybe fall a little short where could you have worked harder what can you accomplish in the next you know 30 30 to 90 days that's going to help you really focus on those goals that you set at the beginning of the year this is a perfect time to do that and then let's say you have reached your goals or 
maybe you have too too far to go on your goals maybe you want to be a homeowner and you're just not there yet think about setting some mini goals for quarter four so the mini goals could be hey i want to lose weight i want to lose 15 to 20 pounds i want to work out five days a week right it doesn't all have to be about money you can focus on some other areas to really help you finish out 2024 strong um, you can think about a payoff challenge, right? Maybe you have a credit card with a, a few, a couple, a few thousand dollar balance. You say, okay, I want to pay this off before the end of the year. That's a great goal to have. Or maybe you want to do a savings challenge or no spend challenge where you say, you know what? I'm not going to spend any money in October. Start prepping for that now so that you can set yourself up for success. Okay, and then the next thing that you can do to really finish off 2024 strong is to start budgeting for Christmas. Hey, Angie. Christmas, I feel like for a lot of people, is a surprise every single year. And it doesn't have to be. You can start planning for that now. So if you know you have young kids at home or you have grandkids that you want to buy for and, you know, just spoil at this time of the year, that's 100% okay. Start prepping for that now. The time to remember that, you know, you need to buy Christmas gifts is not December 15th. And so if you start planning now, it'll take some of that stress off. And then, of course... You definitely want to start thinking about 2025. What does that look like for you, right? What are some money goals that maybe you want to revisit from this year that you can roll over to next year? Uh, what are some things that you want to do financially? Maybe you want to buy a house. Maybe you want to save more money. Maybe you want to pay off, you know, forty, fifty thousand dollars in debt. Whatever it is for 2025, start thinking about it now. And then not only money goals, but just smart goals, right? So your health and wellness, um, the relationship building, networking, skill uh, skill building. What skills do you want to build in, in 2025? What are some hobbies that you want to get back into? Start thinking about that now so that as you're approaching 2025, you can start prepping for that. Something else that you want to be thinking about is how are you going to make more money in 2025? right maybe you've been wanting to go back to school maybe you want to be a nurse right and you want to switch industries maybe you're a teacher you want to be a nurse start looking into that now figuring out okay when do those classes start in 2025 so that when registration opens you can get your documents in good order and then you can submit your application for nursing school or there, or whatever it is that you want to do okay you basically want to be brainstorming what your strategy is so that in 2025 you can hit the ground running you won't have to you know think about oh i think i want to or maybe i want or maybe I could. no you'll already know you'll already be ready you'll be ahead of, ahead of the crowd you won't don't have that new year's blues a lot of times we get so start thinking about how to prep for 2025 now so that you can finish 2024 strong and you can start 2025 strong okay you have to get clear on what you want i think you know we've all heard the saying that if you don't figure out what you want someone will tell you what you want and that's 100 percent true and the last thing that you want to do is be in a position where somebody is telling you what you want and that's not really what you would have preferred okay so start thinking about it now so you can finish 2024 strong and start 2025 strong okay so that's part one let's talk about part two so i saw an article on yahoo finance and it actually was authored well i don't know if it was authored but they had some input from a financial advisor his name is stoy hall and he's he, he said as a financial advisor he's a certified financial advisor um there are five things the middle class wastes money on and i thought this was such an interesting topic because a lot of these i'm gonna give i'm gonna give the five to you but a lot of them we've talked about throughout the year and so it was just interesting to hear another professional's point of view so before we get into the list of five, let's talk about what it looks like to be in a middle class, right? Um, here are some signs that you're in middle class. The first sign, number one sign, according to economists, is that you make between $52,000 and $155,000. So if you singly or you and your spouse make between $52,000 and $155,000, you're considered middle class, right? Give or take a few thousand dollars both ways. Um, but you're considered middle class. So that's one way to know if you're in the middle class. If you have a retirement account, if you're a homeowner, um, if you can obtain or ma maintain health insurance, you're considered middle class. Another indication that you're middle class is that you may maybe take vacations, you have an investment portfolio, 
debt isn't a stressor for you, you have an emergency savings fund, and then you can afford your debt and mortgage, right? And you feel uh, secure financially. So you feel stable financially where you're not really stressing about, you know, groceries or gas, so on and so forth. Now, we know that the 52 to 155 is relative. We won't get into the demographics and the geographics and all of that. But these are just some high level indications that you may be middle class, okay? So what are the five things that were detailed in the article that the middle class wastes money on? The number one thing, and I've been preaching about this all year, so if you guys are watching, have been watching, then you know, is disorganized spending. So no budget, no spending plan, no money management plan, money just going everywhere. You don't know, you know, you're making the money, you're making good money. And you know, $52,000, that's a lot of money, especially in a lot of regions. You just spending it, okay? That's the number one waster of money in the middle class is disorganized spending. I think um, once you reach a, a certain level of income, there's this feeling like, oh, I make a lot of money, I can spend a lot of money, and that's true. But that that that's also not setting yourself up for success. So if you're in the middle class and you don't have a structure to your spending, you're really doing yourself a disservice. You're doing all that hard work. Um, going on those people's job or running your own business, you, you're doing all of this hard work and you're really not um, being a good steward of your money. So that's number one. Number two is clothes. I think with fast fashion, um, it has really done us a disservice. Just, just consumership, just buying everything that we see, like clothes are everywhere. You can't, you go into Walmart, even down here in Texas, we have Kroger and they have clothes in Kroger. Why would you need clothes at a grocery store? But if you're buying clothes, if you're in Target for one thing and you, you get a cute little jumpsuit or you get a sweatshirt or you buy some jeans from Kroger or your own Fashion Nova or, or Zara or even higher end items, um, that's really a big waste of your money. Especially if you have a lot of items in your clothing, a lot of items in your closet that have tags on them. You're buying duplicates of things you don't even know. Um, you can't find what you buy, right? So that's an indication that, that you're wasting a lot of money on clothing. Um, cars. We talked about this as well. We talked about this with um, lifestyle inflation. I think that there's a society, society standard that you have to look well, drive well, live well. And in the article, it said that on average, the middle class wastes $15,000 a year on cars. And live, especially living down here in Dallas, all you see is luxury cars. And I, and I think that's the same in like LA and, you know, other places as well. But the average middle class family is wasting $15,000 a year on cars. And I, I kind of fell into that as well some years back. You guys know when I bought my Beamer and I sold it. But $15,000 is a lot of money, especially if you don't have $15,000 in your bank account. Number four was food. So... We talked about this as well. So uh, buying groceries, and we all know the groceries have gone up almost double in the last five years or so. So buying groceries and eating out. Um, I sent the email to my list, my email list um, a couple months ago. And I talked about at one point, my husband and I, a family of two, were spending $1,200 a month on food. My mind was blown, you know, and being who I am, I was able to catch it relatively fast. But it talked about, you know, you buy all this food, you're stocking up on all this food, and then you're so tired or it said lazy, but I don't want to say lazy, but you don't cook the food. And so you're still eating out. That's a huge money waster. You're going to have to reel that back in if, uh, if your food budget is out of control because you're basically just flushing that down the toilet, okay? Literally. Um, and then five is kids' sports. I thought this was interesting. So I see it on Facebook all the time. Um, people have their kids in multiple sports. We're talking football, soccer, dance, track, um, just all of these sports and tennis, all of these things. And those, those activities cost a lot of money. So when I was a kid, if you did sports, a lot of times you did sports at school, or if you were exceptionally good, then you joined maybe a summer summer league, or you know you went to camp, that type of thing, and that wasn't um, uncommon. But now you see a lot of parents with children and multiple children, and each child is doing two or three sports, and that's costing a lot of money. Um, one of my friends, her kid is in dance, and it can be a thousand to two thousand dollars a season 
uh, for that dance equipment. And so if you're in the middle class and you have kids and they're in multiple sports, you really have to keep an eye on it um, because it can be a huge money waster, especially if we're talking about little kids. Um, if we're talking about kids that are in multiple activities, yeah, if you have a child that's exceptionally gifted, like I have a friend, her daughter's in dance, and she's been doing dance since she was a little girl, amazing dancer, but that's all she does, right? So she's not doing dance and track and field and basketball, but the article just talked about um, kids sports being a huge money waster for the middle class, and I want to give you guys something. Yeah, we want to give our kids what we didn't have, but at some point you have to put a limit on it because it can go overboard and it can be a huge waste of money, especially if you're spending $10,000, dollars $20,000 a year on these activities. Okay, so I thought that was interesting. I'm going to go ahead and post that link to that article as well on Facebook. I'll do a reel on um, Instagram because it's a little bit different, but um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is just some things to think about. Let me know if any of these five um, money wasters, if you are guilty of any of these or what you're going to focus on to really um, impact the last quarter of 2024. I'm interested to know. So thank you guys for watching. I love you guys. As always, I will see you next week. Um, don't forget, like I said, the Money Reset is open. Six-week group coaching course. I teach you how to create a 12-month budget in six weeks. We sit down. We do it together. Um, we do a lot of mindset work. I have modules and videos that you guys go through. We have live group coaching where I answer questions. And it's just a really... A course focused on not just idea, but actually doing and setting you up for the future. So you all have a great week. I will see you next week. And yeah, bye. <laughs>